we introduced probabilistic graphical models and Markov networks in particular. And now let's take a look at what are the kind of queries that you can ask from these, these networks. The easiest query that you can run is called the most probable explanation. In this case, you have some evidence. You observe some of your random variables. For instance, these two random variables would consist of a set which belong to the evidence. For instance, this random variable takes the value 1, and this takes the, other, the value 0. And then the question you are, you are asking is that given this evidence, what's the most likely configuration for the rest of the network? So you are looking for the argmax uh, of the remaining variables in the graph. Then the second one, and somewhat more complicated one, is when you are, again, given the, the evidence, so you clamp some of these random variables, but you're not interested in the configuration of all of the, the remaining random variables. So for instance, you're not interested in, in what this one is doing. So you're only interested in just some subset. So you marginalize over those variables that you're not interested in, and you're only looking for the optimal configuration over or the subset that, that you are interested in. So think about things like um, having a, a probability distribution describing different symptoms and their correlations. And you have a patient, and you observe a couple of those symptoms, but not others. Then you can run a query to find out what are the other symptoms that you should be looking for, assuming that the person has a certain kind of disease. And the main thing here is that even if you train the network and it reproduces the probability distribution that you are interested in, running these queries is still computationally very difficult. In fact, most of these problems are at least NP-hard. And when you think about deep learning, once you train the network, running an inference step is relatively inexpensive. You can run it on a cell phone in many cases. Whereas here, even inference using the model remains hard. So if we can give some advantage by using quantum resources, that's extremely valuable. So given that the problem is hard, there are a couple of ways of dealing with it. One of the ways of dealing with it is using approximate inference. So instead of solving it accurately, you, you run some sampling or, or possible outcomes. And when you, when you have a digital computer that's deterministic, you actually fake randomness and you fake sampling from probability distribution by methods which are typically Markov chain Monte Carlo methods, which have their own problems. They take time to burn in, and samples can be correlated, and first and foremost, they take a lot of computational time. But then remember that our probability distribution is just this. It factorizes a Boltzmann distribution. So if we can set an Ising model, then we can just use a quantum computer to do approximate inference for us. And you have options. So if you have a quantum annealer, and you have a fair number of qubits, and your task is to, to estimate the effective temperature of the system, so you can rescale these energy values uh, according to what the hardware is actually executing. So there is this extra step that you have to do. Or you can run the gate model quantum approximate thermalization protocol, which um, needs an ancilla system, which means that you have to use a lot more qubits than what you are just actually interested in. And they are on a smaller scale, but that's an option too. Whichever method you choose, you can accelerate some of these Markov networks at training and also during inference.